You speaking English powerfully, speaking English fluently in six months, fluent in six months. Is it possible? Can you do it? Can you speak English fluently and powerfully in six months, six months from today? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Let's talk about what this means. To be fluent and how to do it. First, let's just talk about this word fluent. Fluent in six months. Fluent. What does this word fluent mean? Fluent. Well, fluent has the same root as the word fluid. Fluid means flowing or moving like water. Okay? Water like movement, right? So, if you think of water, think of a river or a stream. How does it move? Right? It moves bookish. That's why I use the name bookish English. Water moves bookish lie and smoothly, right? That's how water flows or moves. So, fluent or fluency, we're talking about a smooth movement. Now, if we're talking about English, what are we talking about? It's the smooth movement of words, of phrases, of sentences, of the language. It means you speak in a way that's fairly bookish and smooth. The opposite of fluent would be to speak, uh, like, um, speak like, uh, this and, uh, right. That's the opposite of fluent. It means the words are not coming out smoothly. They're not coming out easily. They're not coming out naturally, right? That's not fluent. So we're talking specifically about speaking. When we say fluent or fluency, we're talking about speaking and how the words come out. That's the meaning of fluency. That is the real meaning of fluency. Flowing like water. I often try to use the phrase powerful. Powerfully speak. Speak powerfully. So again, you're confident when you speak. The words come out fairly easily. They flow out. This does not mean, let's talk about what fluency does not mean. It does not mean perfection, right? If you're fluent, you're conversationally fluent. It means you're fluent when you have a normal conversation. You're not perfect. You're not perfect. You will make mistakes. You'll make grammar mistakes. You might make some pronunciation mistakes. Hey, I make mistakes sometimes still. So you're going to make mistakes. It's not perfection. Number two, fluency does not mean like a native speaker. Okay? So, when you speak fluently, it does not mean you speak at the same level as I do. I learned English from when I was a baby. So, it does not mean like a native speaker. That's a much higher level of English speaking. That's very, very advanced. Okay? You don't need that advanced level to speak fluently, for your words to come out easily, for you to communicate effectively. Okay? Fluency is sort of the first level of communicating effectively, powerfully. The words come out fairly easily. What else? Do you need a huge amount of vocabulary to speak fluently? No, you don't. Because again, we're talking about conversational fluency. So, when you are fluent and you're conversationally fluent, what does it mean? It means you speak and communicate fairly easily, effectively, powerfully in normal conversations, normal everyday conversations, normal everyday topics. So, not talking about special topics like economics or business or something from, you know, school. No, every day, you know, talking about the weather, talking about your feelings, how you feel, talking about what you did today or yesterday or what you're going to do tomorrow, you know, buying a train ticket, going shopping, 
those everyday, normal conversations that we have. For that, you only need about 3,000 words of vocabulary. Some people say less, some people say a little more. I'll just give you the average, around 3,000 words. That's not a huge amount. It's not small, it's not tiny, but it's not huge. So, if you can use 3,000 words fairly easily in natural phrases, you're fluent. You're conversationally fluent. Are you finished with English at that point? No, you're not. You still have a long way to go if you want to be like a native speaker or close to a native, but you can certainly be fluent in six months. So, what it means is you speak powerfully, naturally, smoothly, fairly smoothly, with mistakes. You will definitely be making mistakes still after six months. Don't worry about it. As long as people understand you, as long as you're communicating well, you're fluent. Let's talk about the next part of this. Fluent in six months. Six months, what do we mean by that? Six months. Well, honestly, if we talk about six months, talking about months is not really the best way to talk about time for your goal of speaking English in six months. Because you can imagine, imagine we have two students. One student only listens to English one hour per week, and the other one listens to English ten hours per day. After six months, there's going to be a huge difference between these two. If someone only does one hour per week, they will not be fluent in six months. It's not enough time. Really, we should talk about hours rather than days or weeks or months or years. It's the hours. It's the number of hours you spend learning English that's important. So. When we're talking about getting fluent in six months, there are two important things. There's quantity, it means the amount, the amount of hours especially. And there's quality. Quality, it's how you use those hours every day. Because how you learn is also very, very important. You could spend five hours a day learning English but do it in a way that's not effective, low quality. So you need both quantity and quality to achieve this goal. Let's first talk about the quantity. How many hours do you need? How many hours do you need to become fluent, conversationally fluent? Well, it's different for every person. I can't give you an exact number. I'll give you a very general number. Let's say about 700 hours. About 700 hours of quality, effective English learning, study, practice, training, about 700 hours. Now, for some people, it will be more, might be a thousand, and for some, it might be less. So, we'll just say, as a general average guess, about 700 hours. Now, here's some good news. You already have some hours, right? You probably learned English in school for many years. That was low quality. A lot of those hours were not very good. But still, it's better than nothing. Okay? If you learned English for five years in school, you at least learned some vocabulary through memorization. Maybe you can't use it very effectively. Maybe your head is filled with grammar and you're confused. You're not fluent yet, but it's still better than zero. So you still have some hours already. That's good news. That will help you. It means you don't quite need 700 hours. Maybe you only need 500 to get fluency which is great. Good news for you. The other part of this, that's quantity. That's the amount of hours you need in six months. The next part is quality. It's how you do it that is very important. 
As I said in school, low, low, low quality. You might learn English in school for a thousand hours, but the problem is you're memorizing lists of vocabulary that you quickly forget. You're memorizing long lists of grammar that you can't use when you speak. Too complicated. You forget. You're taking tests. You're stressed. You're bored. A lot of time in class, you're not really focused. You're kind of bored. When you're doing your homework, you're bored. You're half asleep. So you might have a thousand hours in school, but it does not really equal a thousand quality hours. Maybe it only equals about one hundred hours, really, because it's so low quality. So you want to get the highest quality from every minute, from every hour that you learn English. That is what the bookish English system does. So what do I mean by quality? Number one, power. Right, it means it's a powerful way to learn. It means you are focused. You are focused and concentrating every minute. So if you're listening to English but you're kind of falling asleep, you're sitting at your desk. That's low quality. That's no good. You're wasting a lot of your time. Your brain needs to be awake. You need to be focused. You need to be listening carefully to every word, every phrase. That's the highest quality: alert, awake, maximum concentration. It needs to be understandable. This is something else for quality English learning. You must understand it. If you don't understand it, you're wasting your time. So this is the problem. If you're lower level and you listen to a movie or a TV show, you're wasting your time. It's too advanced. You can't understand anything, so most of your time is completely wasted. You're watching two hours or an hour of TV, but really you're getting almost no quality English learning. So you must understand it. It can be a little difficult, but not too difficult. Very, very important. Understandable is super important. That's part of quality. Next, you need to have some emotion, positive, even negative sometimes, but especially strong positive emotions will help you learn much faster. That's also part of quality. It's why I use stories a lot in bookish English. Just think about it. When you learn something with no emotion. Just kind of flat. It's much easier to forget. But if you learn something with excitement or energy or passion, or sometimes even fear or humor, laughter, you are more likely to remember it and to remember it for a long time. So it needs to be emotional and energetic. Emotion and energy go together. So again, a low energy. Low quality way to study English is to sit at your desk listening or just reading a textbook, right? It's low energy. Your mind starts to go to sleep. You're wasting a lot of your time. But if you're up, if you're moving, if your heart's you know beating, you got energy going through your body. You're feeling good. You're smiling. You're awake. Your brain wakes up. Everything is much more effective. Everything you do, you will remember better. You will learn faster. This is so important. You need the highest quality time to achieve this goal. I'll give you a quick example of this. Let's say you're trying to learn the verb to cuddle. To cuddle. That's a nice little word. To cuddle. Now, the low quality way. The school way, the normal way to learn to cuddle would be to look in the dictionary for the verb to cuddle and to write down the meaning and then to memorize it. To cuddle, to cuddle, to cuddle is repeated a lot, right? It's boring, so it's probably going to be low energy. There's no emotion. You're just trying to memorize it. 
and then you probably have a list of a lot more words you're also trying to memorize. So when you get to the end of the list, you've forgotten the first one. You forgot cuddle. And then you have to go back and try it again, again, and again, and again. It's boring. It's ineffective. You waste a lot of time. What does it mean, by the way, to cuddle? To cuddle means to be affectionate, like to hug and kind of rub with someone. It has a romantic idea. Okay, so it's not really sexual, but it can be. If you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, they like to cuddle, right? They're always touching and hugging and rubbing against each other. But you can also do it. You know, children like to cuddle. So if you have a child, you can cuddle and hug them, and oh, it feels so good. Or even with a dog, a puppy, right? A puppy you can play around with, you hug him. And maybe kiss. Not like super romantic kissing, but, you know, kiss him on the head. And again, it's more of this action of rubbing and holding and hugging, to cuddle. So you've got the one way, the old way to learn it. You just try to memorize it, to hug affectionately. Now, imagine a different way of learning this word. Imagine that a super sexy, hot guy or girl, whichever you prefer, comes up to you and you think, ah, this person is so amazing, so attractive. I love them so much. I want them. Oh, and they come up to you and they say, let's cuddle. Let's cuddle. Oh, and then they hug you and you start rubbing against each other and holding each other. And they're whispering the word in your ear. Oh, it feels so good to cuddle with you. Oh, I love cuddling with you. Now, how are you going to feel? Your heart's going to be beating. Boom, boom, super powerful emotion. There's also physical feelings happening at the same time. Which one is more memorable? Are you going to remember studying it from the dictionary definition, trying to memorize it the old way, the normal school way? Or are you going to remember this super emotional experience of this hot guy or girl cuddling with you and saying the word in your ear? Obviously, the experience about cuddling with the guy or the girl will be much more memorable. I guarantee you will never forget that word again. This will become one of your favorite words. You'll know, you'll learn it instantly, and you'll never forget it. That's an example, an extreme example, of the highest quality of learning, in this case, vocabulary, right? Because it's got the maximum amount of emotion. Now, of course, normally day to day, it's hard to achieve that super high level of emotion. I wish we could. It's hard to. But still, we can get much more emotion if we learn vocabulary and learn phrases and even grammar using stories, using physical movement. All the things we do in bookish English are designed to bring the emotion higher, bring the energy higher, so that you remember everything much faster and longer. That's how we get faster, more powerful results because the quality is so much higher with bookish English. Let's talk about another example. I want you to train like a champion. Imagine that English, instead of like a subject you study in school, imagine it's more like a sport. It's an activity that you're training for, like you would for a sport, right? To be a champion. You're going to be a champion English speaker. You are a champion English speaker. How would you train like a champion? I do jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's my hobby. So let's imagine two jiu-jitsu fighters, two jiu-jitsu students, okay? One is just a normal person like me, like most people who learn jiu-jitsu, and the other one is Andre Galvao 
who is a world champion. Let's look at the difference in quality, how they train, and quantity. How do they train jiu-jitsu, and how do they get results? What are the results? How are they different? What's different about a champion and a normal person? Because again, I want you to be a champion in English, not just a normal school learner. A normal person for jiu-jitsu usually goes to class two or three times per week. Two or three times a week is the kind of normal, average jiu-jitsu learner, and that's what I do. Most of the people I know train two to three times per week. What does Andre Galvao, the world champion, do? He trains twice per day, maybe more. Two times per day, that's 14 times per week instead of two or three. So his quantity, his amount, is much, much higher. But guess what? It's also much more quality. The other thing, when a normal person learns a new technique in jiu-jitsu, they practice that technique maybe 10 times, maybe 20 times. I'd say, at the most, probably 50 times. How many times does Andre Galvao practice a new technique that he's working on? A thousand times or more. He practices each new technique 1,000 times or more. The amount of repetition that a champion gets in their practice, in their training, is much, much higher. Again, so much higher quantity. Repetitions, it's the amount of time, the number of hours per day, and also the amount of repetition that they get is so much higher for a champion. And then, the quality. What about the quality? The amount of focus. So for a normal jiu-jitsu learner, they think of it as kind of a hobby. That's how I think of jiu-jitsu. It's a hobby. So I go and I'm... I try to pay attention. I'm focused, of course. I'm awake when I'm there. I'm enjoying myself. But Andre Galvao, or another champion, is much, much higher than that. They are totally focused, right? They are super high energy. They are serious. They are concentrating every minute. They are learning every minute. Their training, the intensity, the emotion, is super high. They're also consistent. Normal people who are learning something like jiu-jitsu or any sport as a hobby, ah, you know, some days you feel good and you try really hard, and some days maybe you're a little tired, a little lazy, you don't try your best, and it's kind of up and down. Day to day, it's different. A champion like Andre Galvao, every moment, every day, every training, it's a hundred percent effort all the time, a hundred percent energy all the time, a hundred percent passion and emotion all the time. Every minute, every hour, every week, every month of training. The emotional quality, the energy, is so much higher than just regular normal people. And of course, what's the result? Andre Galvao, super fast improvement, world champion, normal people, still improving, but slow, slow improvement. I'm getting a little better at jiu-jitsu, but it's very slow. Most people, you know, they improve, but slowly, nothing like a champion. Normal people will never become world champions. We can learn from this example because we see this in all sports, in all different skill areas, this same idea of quantity and quality. And quality... That's what determines the amount of success you have, how powerful your results are, and how fast your improvement is. So you, I want you to be a powerful champion. I want you to be the Andre Galvao of English learning. You can be a champion English speaker. You can speak English powerfully and fluently in six months. Six months from now, you can do it. 
you will do it when you use the bookish English system. The highest quantity you can get, and of course, most importantly, the highest quality every single time you listen to English, learn English, and train with English. Quality, quality, quality. That's what bookish English is about. Now, another important point. Don't let anyone else tell you that you cannot do this. Don't let anyone else tell you you can't do anything in life. Not just about English. Anything. There are always people out there who will tell you, you can't do it. It can't be done. You can't be fluent in six months. You can't make a lot of money. You can't start your own business. You can't. You can't. Right? There's always these negative people in life. I promise you. Anytime you try to do something amazing, anytime you try to succeed, anytime you push yourself, there will be people telling you, you can't do it. There will be people trying to make you feel weaker. I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know if they're disappointed in their own life. I don't know why they do it, but they do. There are just a lot of negative people in the world who will criticize you, who will tell you, you can't do it. You shouldn't do it all the time. Don't listen to these people. Champions do not listen to negative people. Champions just ignore those people. See, my job is the opposite. I always call myself an English coach, not a teacher. I think teachers are too negative. I just don't like the word teacher. Coach, right? A coach. My job is to be your coach. And as your coach, I want to destroy doubt. I want to destroy weakness. Okay? I want to build your power. I want to build and increase your confidence. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to dream bigger. I want you to dream more powerfully. I want you to believe that you can do it, that you will do it, whatever you want in life. Certainly English, but anything else that you want in your life, you can do it. It is possible. You can be powerful in your life. You can speak English powerfully. You can be fluent in six months. You can eventually become like a native speaker if that's what you want. You can do it. You do have the power. Trust yourself. Don't listen to all the people who say, No, no, no. You can't. You can't. No, you can, and you will. Will it always be easy? No. But you're strong. You will find the strength. You will find the power. You can, and you will be a champion. Just believe in yourself. That is my message to you. Think like a champion. Act like a champion. Train like a champion with English, and you will speak English powerfully and fluently in six months. Maybe less, maybe more. It's your decision. You can, and you will do it. Be a champion and trust yourself. And go to Bookish English Channel and practice every day. See you next time.